Okay, hello, and welcome to msdynamicsworld.com Spring CRM webcast series. I'm Jason Gumpert, and I am joined today by Dan Griffin, Channel Sales Director for Silver Pop and a veteran of the CRM industry. We're really pleased to have him joining us today and uh, look forward to hearing his key takeaways from Convergence 2014. So we invite you to add your feedback and ask Dan questions today during the session, and you can use uh, the chat block or the Q&A block that you should see to the right of the slides um, to do that. Uh, without further delay, please allow me to start the webcast off by uh, welcoming Dan Griffin. Dan. Excellent. Thank you, Jason. It's great to be back on MS Dynamics World talking about some of our favorite things here at Silverpot, Microsoft CRM, uh, anecdotally convergence, and, and, of course, marketing automation. So the things we're going to cover today will really be the five things from a Microsoft user perspective and a partner perspective that we learned at Convergence. And for those that may or may not be aware or that aren't aware, Convergence is the single largest gathering of Microsoft Dynamics users, partners, and Microsoft uh, resources in the world. And you can learn more in four days than you can probably learn in three weeks of independent study by attending this event. Today, we're going to focus a little bit on the buyer revolution. There's a lot of uh, discussion in the marketplace and in the Microsoft world around marketing and marketing automation. And tools are important, but so is sound strategy and understanding how folks are buying both from a consumer perspective and a business perspective. We're going to share a little perspective on Microsoft Dynamics Marketing, formerly known as Marketing Pilot. This was an, an, a huge presence at Convergence this year, and we're going to talk a little bit about where it's a fit and where it still is working on growing into the marketing space and how you'll see that layer in the Microsoft offerings in the future and how companies like Silverpop also fit into this in the future. But very exciting that Microsoft is entering into the marketing and marketing automation space that can, continues to validate the things that Silverpop has been doing over the last 14 years. I'm going to share a little bit about our customer presence. And this is important because we had a few award winners uh, at the Customer Excellence Awards. We'll talk about what those are, um, what you would have learned about Silverpop had you attended Convergence. And then we're going to end it with a little fun uh, slide or two around um, what happens at Convergence if you attend and some of the other incredible partners that we do a lot of business with because they are leaders in their particular industry as well. But let's get started with a topic that we call the buyer revolution. And every single one of us has purchased something in the last year. And it's highly likely every single one of us has used the Internet to do some research. So what we want to talk about from the marketer's perspective, the business development person's perspective, and the salesperson's perspective is who's really in control? Or do you think you're steering this car, this sales experience that your, your prospects or buyers are going through? I want to share a few statistics with you. 57% of the buying process is already done before a salesperson or an inside salesperson or a demand generation representative or someone behind a counter at a retail store even gets a chance to talk to your prospect or customer. And this is a general figure, but it's very telling. Over half of the buying experience has already concluded before you are in an actual interaction discussion with your prospect. So it becomes more and more important to control your image, your brand, understand where you need to control those pieces from a marketing perspective, and import more, most importantly, give the keys to the car to that buyer and how you do that with marketing automation. So we want to create a compelling customer experience. We want to capitalize on all of that research, all of those behaviors that buyers exhibit that aren't conversations, that aren't direct reactions to a marketing effort, but the things they're doing before they engage in your marketing uh, efforts. So let's think about it for a second. Previously, it took about $10 million to enter a startup technology space. 
you had to worry about hiring developers. You had to have a really good idea. You had to find investors to participate uh, for the most part. Now you can enter it in less than $25,000. And the reason you can do that is incredible platforms like Microsoft Dynamics CRM that allow you to build business right solutions and sell that to businesses so that they can be better sales and marketing people in their industry within a niche process. And there are hundreds of applications like CRM that are platforms that enable you to do this. So what we've created is parity in the go-to-market perspective in terms of net new businesses coming online. What becomes the most important battlefront or factor in realistically closing sales is the customer experience. And that does not own, that, that includes a whole lot more than what your website looks like and what happens when you're face to face with a customer. So let's take a second to think about does the customer experience really matter? And maybe more telling is here's the largest mobile commerce company in the world. And naturally you would think it would be a financial services company or someone like Google that spends a lot of time with ads and, and different pieces. It's not MasterCard, it's not Visa, it's not American Express, it's not PayPal, and it's not Google. In fact, it's Starbucks. Starbucks, early on in the digital marketing world, realized that they could create an incredible customer experience by making my trip to the local Starbucks or when I'm on the road, my trip to any Starbucks, very seamless. That includes paying by my phone. That includes an app that tells me where my where a Starbucks is compared to where I'm located. But because they've created an incredible customer experience mobily and digitally, they've driven about five hundred million dollars in revenue alone just in 2012. Uh, we, we're eagerly awaiting this number for 2013, and we should hear it soon. But I would anticipate it's much higher than $500 million. And it's a pretty incredible story to know that a coffee company, a retailer, is the leader in the commerce in, or in creating a customer experience. So let's talk about changing the way we think about sales. And for years, we've uh, both B2B and B2C have sold in, in very similar ways. Enter the internet, enter, enter the digital world, enter really powerful marketing tools, web analytics. All of the things that are happening in the digital space changes the way the buying process occurs in any market. The digital world's creating this buyer revolution. The salesperson and the marketing person have to make sure they're changing as well. If you're not changing, your competitors are. One of the first things we want to do is embrace the window shopper. So what that means is let's talk about and, and focus on those personas of people that aren't interacting with us on a one-to-one -one basis, voice, or sharing information, but the people that happen to be walking by our storefront, looking in, making that decision. You know, this is the 57% that's occurring where you aren't in control. We want to make sure that Window shopping is accommodated in your process. You need to decide what information is important to understand about the window shopper. Now, typically, window shoppers are online, and I have a bunch of friends, and it, it's pretty interesting to me that they buy product online based on reviews that are written online, and they have no idea where those reviews come from. However, you can start to control that review process. This is a common area where the quote-unquote window shopper is learning about your potential product. And we're going to talk about some of the places where you can manage your brand uh, here in a little bit. You want to be able, when that prospect quote-unquote walks into your store, picks up the phone and calls you, fills out your contact me form online, reaches out to you at a conference, you want to be able to be extremely successful once they have chosen to engage with you. The, when they've signed up for that newsletter, it's highly likely they've spent a good deal of time already learning about your organization or your company. And 
they're contacting you because they're now showing buying behavior. They're, I liken this to when my parents would go buy a car, and I am 39 years old, so I'll, I'll go ahead and date myself. There wasn't the Internet for me to go out and say, I want to get this model, this make, with this type of seats, and I want serious satellite radio, and they need to have heated seats because I live in the Northeast where it's still snowing in spring. But in fact, I can do that now. I can go right to the dealership and find the exact car color specs that I want. So it's very different. The salesperson in an automobile instance is really unsure when you come on the lot what you're going to like, but you provide them with very specific information. In the buyer revolution, that specific information is happening before your, your prospects engage with you. So just a, a, a fun picture and quote here. You want to be the caddy. Uh, in, in the golf world, the caddy doesn't swing a club, but it helps the person playing golf understand the course, the layout. Uh, helps them choose club selection. What kind of shot should I play? How do I read this green? All things that help them make decisions. The role of the salesperson is becoming the caddy, and, which is conversely, in another sports reference, conversely to right now, and, and even you know, the last couple decades or so, the salesperson view themselves as the quarterback. So we want to move from a leading role to a supporting role. And back to our reference of who's driving the car, um, you, your sales rep wants to call shotgun as they drive, run to the car to get in with the customer. You want to sit in that passenger seat and help make that experience as incredible as you can. And what you want to do is capture that information that marketing automation allows you to, to, uh, to, to speak to them in an educated and informative way. So it's no longer just about winning deals. It's about creating lifetime value, uh, providing business benefit, and making your customer wildly successful. So I want to share a story about one of our clients who is also a Microsoft CRM user, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Louisiana. And how do they use marketing automation? So a few things to know about Blue Cross Blue Shield, Louisiana. They sell insurance products to consumers. They have a finite area where they can sell them to, the state of Louisiana. And as you can imagine, there is all sorts of demographic information, um, health information, and different pockets of data that make them make Blue Cross Blue Shield more powerful. The real question is how do you take that data and turn it into a powerful sales tool? So they focused on treating the customer as a partner, not just dumping a bunch of information in front of them. They want to help them select the right product. They're trying to change the brand of the insurance provider to being a friend, being a partner. It's hard enough to get away from selling insurance and the stereotypes that go with that, but if Blue Cross Blue Shield Louisiana, which they have figured out, if I can go to that prospect or client and share based on data, and, and we're talking about big data, and we'll talk about what that is here shortly. If I can use big data to help recommend to my prospect or existing customer other products that are beneficial to them, it's a lot easier than here are our list of products, go educate yourself. So they use behavioral analysis to structure their lead scoring. And it's really interesting because they have somewhere in the neighborhood of 24 to 26 disparate data sources that collide into their CR, Microsoft CRM instance. And then they leverage uh, CRM marketing and core motives from Silverpop to handle all of their web intelligence. So when you are on their website and you look at a product, they know when you clicked there and what page you visited and how long you were there. Now that in and of itself might not mean a whole lot. But if they also went to your ROI calculator and compared two products and which one would fit their family best, now we're starting to learn a lot more. These unintended behaviors that our customers, prospects, consumers are showing, both business and individual, are happening and it makes you a more informed salesperson. So what are the four things that you can do as a marketer and a salesperson 
to really start creating that amazing customer experience with the ultimate goal of driving higher revenue, it might feel pretty obvious. Obvious. Be easy to find. Don't make folks search for you. Show up at the top of the list. And it's not just about search engines. There are all sorts of different types of areas based on your vertical and based on what your business does that you need to be involved in. Think about social. Social is not going away. And it's not just Twitter. LinkedIn, Wikipedia, Quora. You know, there's an interesting story about Wikipedia that our CEO told at Convergence. And it was, I challenge you to go search for your company on the Internet. And then when you do that, on the first page, there's a pretty high likelihood that there's an entry about your company on Wikipedia. You can control that message. Other people can control it for you. So Wikipedia is a, a very underutilized or underthought of tool that, in fact, answers a large portion of people's questions as they use the Internet for research. Leverage your sales team. Don't be afraid to participate in blogs, communities, questions, FAQs. Engage. Now, certainly that comes with rules. That comes with uh, managed messaging and content from the marketing side. But the one-to-one -one interaction is what customers are looking for. And when they ask the question, make sure you're answering them uh, on your website, on your blog. Pretty important. And of course, getting listed. So what has come out of the ratings game and the review sites are listing sites that rank you, much like if you think about consumer reports that goes through and ranks various consumer products based on their feedback and reviews and, and input from uh, the, the general public. G2 Crowd and Trust Radius are just two. There are many for each individual vertical, and I would recommend that you spend some time understanding what these listing and ranking sites are like for your particular industry and your particular business. But be able to be found. Automate and nurture. Very important. So a Wikipedia definition of lead nurture, I'm not going to read this to you, but marketing automation, or by definition, digital marketing from a technology perspective that allows you to both engage with and understand the behaviors of your buyers. Leveraging an extendable software platform that provides you with SMS messaging, email creation, activity integration to your CRM, and then building a nurture track that walks them, their, your personas, your buying personas, through your control buying cycle while they still feel like they're in control is very important. It's amazing to me that 64% of marketers are not doing automation. What that means is they're doing what we just described but they're not using a tool to do it that makes their life easier so that they can work harder to keep the funnel filled. Your prospects, partners, or customers educated. They are sending one-off emails every time you need to send one rather than using a robust tool integrated or embedded within your CRM to what, what is called set it and forget it. So here's a few example campaigns for you to think about in terms of automate and nurture, <coughs> excuse me, purchasing hot, bun, hot buttons. When a sales rep is talking to a particular buyer or a prospect and they hit on one of the important differentiators between you and your competition, <coughs> they can drop them with the click of a button into the nurture campaign for that particular interest point. Marketing and marketing automation platform takes over from there. Think about those engagement factor, those engagement points within your uh, buying personas and make it easy for your sales rep to continue to add value to the buyer, be it consumer or uh, commercial. Don't be afraid to think about old leads or lost business. We all lose clients. We all win clients. Those clients that you lost, they might not be happy with, with the competitor that they chose. You shouldn't be afraid to re-engage with them. The worst that can happen in the digital space is they just ask to opt out. 
because you're not going to aggressively position, but you just want to make sure that you continue to be top of mind and let them know we're still out here. It's a <clears throat> it's a whole lot cheaper to do that from an automation standpoint digitally than it is to place physical phone calls. So using automation and nurturing is, is pretty important. If you would have attended Convergence, Microsoft does this very, very well. The amount of communication you get, which are, which, which are automated, by the way, from the minute that you, even before you sign up, but we'll start with sign up for Convergence, I probably received around 10 different communications from Microsoft from when I signed up for Convergence to when I actually got into my hotel. And they were all different, and they were all tailored to me. So they knew I was interested in CRM. So I would get information about the CRM track. And they knew that I was staying within walking distance of the convention center. So they shared with me what was around in Atlanta that I could explore and, and walk to. So following up afterwards with evaluations and surveys and postings to recorded sessions, all things that are important, it's not just that communication that happens at a point in time. Spread it out and make sure that you're prepping beforehand for these webinars and trade shows and following up afterwards. Understanding behaviors. So at Silvertop, we have a term called universal behaviors. And it really represents <clears throat> the things that people are doing while not directly interacting with a person. What they do is far more important than what they say. Again, back to 57% of the buying cycle is complete before you get a chance to really state your case. So if you just think about the, the digital breadcrumbs that we leave behind, and I'm going to share a story from my days in the Microsoft CRM uh, implementation space where we had at, in the, at, the, at my, the partner that I worked with, we had a target list of, a fi of 10 financial institutions for the region that I was working. And we leveraged Cormos and Silverpop to track all of our web traffic that hit our website. And we started to see some interesting behavior around a particular vertical that we were tracking. And then we started to see some location behavior, but we still didn't have a name, and we didn't have a company. And then after a couple weeks, someone from this company filled out a white paper request. All of that intelligence that they had been doing from a research perspective anonymously flowed into my CRM. I knew immediately who it was because they gave me their information. We were on the phone with them within a day talking about specifically what they were looking for because we knew the pages that they'd spent the most time on. We knew the white paper that they downloaded. And we knew the industry that they were in. We were able to cut to the chase and be working with a major financial institution in under a month, which blew me away. And it all came down to we knew their behavior, and they told us as much. Understanding behaviors can, as I just shared, it can really change the game in terms of your ability from a speed to impact and how deep you can go to really moving the bar forward. Think about what folks are doing before they engage. Understand what they are doing and capture that information. And as they come in and identify themselves, all of that information will merge. So here's a, a pretty good example. If I'm a salesperson, it's pretty good that I know the title of the person I'm selling to and what their, what their time frame is to make a selection and their budget and their industry. That's not bad, but let's call that average. I mean, everyone should be doing that, especially you know, if we talk about a B2B uh, selling standpoint for a second. Everyone should be doing that. It's a whole lot better if I understand, hey, they downloaded a strategic white paper. And they sat through a demonstration of my product, whether it's online or I was at a, you know, a heavy equipment dealer versus just knowing they're in the manufacturing industry. Oh, by the way, they visited my site three times in two days. And here are the exact pages that they hit. Custom ROI calculator that tracks and stores results that you're able to have an intelligent communication with them on. And then, of course, you know, clicking on case studies and what did they read and what didn't they read. That's a ball game changer. You just understood from a behavioral insights perspective what your buyer or prospect is looking to do, and you've accelerated your conversation 
and you're helping them now make their decisions rather than having to pitch your product. And apply revenue science. So uh, what would you do differently if you knew a few things? And these are some made-up scenarios. Um, you know, my favorite one, and, and you can read these on your own, is the bottom one as, as we were, um, some of my peers and I were working through this presentation. It might actually hurt that a sales VP follows up the call after a proposal. It could have a negative impact. Don't be afraid to make that change. But um, one of, one of uh, my mentors once said, uh, he always ran his business on inspecting what you expect and not being afraid to make change. And I would recommend that without goals and without targets and without understanding how your buyer's personas make decisions, if you don't track those and adjust those, you're going to fall behind. So understanding what moves the needle one way or the other is pretty important. And then, of course, the advanced game of revenue science uh, really incorporates big data, as we talked about with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana. Understanding where all this data comes from and being able to make sense of it and really get to an ROI, or if you're a marketer, your return on marketing investment, Rami, understanding what drives revenue and not being afraid to change what's not working. Now, certainly, as we talk about this from a Microsoft CRM perspective, these are incremental steps. Over 15 years of deploying CRM solutions, I've never seen a CRM solution come out that had all of the data points it ever wanted and ever needed right out of the gate for phase one. So really think about what you're trying to accomplish. Pair your marketing automation platform with your CRM and figure out some real objectives and measure those, object those objectives. And you will grow into revenue science. So I guess, you know, this probably makes a lot of sense after we just talked about some of these statistics and buying behaviors that, you know, in fact, we're just riding in the passenger seat, the customer steering the car, and, you know, the future of selling should be pretty fun because selling and uh, sales and marketing will be paired together and really jointly working to, to navigate the customer through their buying process while they control it on a one-to-one -one basis. So hopefully I've done a good enough job to let you know that you're probably not steering the car. Your client is steering the car. So we wanted to share that with you. Um, that was one. Of, that was our CEO's presentation at Convergence with uh, with uh, James Spears from Blue Cross Blue Shield Louisiana. Um, we're going to see uh, James and Bill here in a second. But let's talk a little bit about Microsoft Dynamics Marketing or or the product formerly known as Marketing Pilot. Um, at Convergence, Microsoft Dynamics Marketing was a prominent discussion. So I'll give you a little history if you don't know. Microsoft is entering the marketing space. They purchased a product called Marketing Pilot. Uh, I, I want to say it was 12 to 18 months ago, probably more like 18 months ago. Marketing Pilot was an MRM. It's an ERP tool for marketers, for tracking budget, for managing projects, for digital asset management, ad buying, everything that marketers do it was an, an all-encompassing tool, but what it didn't do was, at least very well, was marketing automation, all the things we just talked about from a buyer revolution, email sending, tracking web intelligence, SMS, creating nurture campaigns. So this convergence, Microsoft started to pull the covers back a little bit and share what the marketing automation experience will be over the next few releases. So if I look at this slide, Dynamics Marketing is really, really good at the marketing resource management. It's really, really good at the bottom side, the marketing analytics. But where the challenges exist for CRM users and CRM partners is the data integration, sending mass emails, nurture campaigns, things that the marketing automation space have had for years, Microsoft is, is enhancing and, and or adding to uh, Dynamics Marketing. So we're excited at Silverpop to have Microsoft be entering this space because it only validates what we've known for years, which is you need digital technology from a marketing perspective to really drive your business. And more and more, the adage that we, everyone talks about, the marketer is becoming a, a big portion of a company's budget and technology, the IT decisions are being pushed forward to the business. So we're excited that this is a hot topic 
and we look forward to uh, seeing what marketing di or Microsoft Dynamics marketing has in the future. From a, a silver pot perspective, um, we've been in the space for 14 years, and we're pretty comfortable with our product and our knowledge, uh, being a market leader uh, based on various analyst reports in this space, and we're, we're happy to see someone like a Microsoft be excited to play in this space, too. So real quick, let's start, um, we'll accelerate a little bit here and start walking through Silverpop's customer presence at Convergence. Um, this is important because it gives you an idea of how prominent marketing automation is within the general CRM space. In fact, I, even though they're separate platforms, we often talk about CRM and marketing automation as, as you know, being paired together because you really need one to have the other, either, either way that you, that you look at it. So a, a couple clients that were uh, highlighted at Convergence, and I would encourage you to think about how you uh, would see them in the marketing space, Weight Watchers International. So if you've ever been to Convergence, there are three incredibly heavy, heavily attended sessions. There's the opening general session, there's the keynote, and then they're not as heavily attended but very much looked at are the Customer Excellence Awards. So uh, Weight Watchers International is a client of ours, and they were fortunate enough because of their uh, leadership in a CRM and marketing automation platform space to have Mike Olson, their director of CRM and business, business intelligence applications, share the general session with Wayne Morris, who's uh, Microsoft's corporate VP of marketing. Very cool. I, uh, I think that there was around 6,000 to 7,000 people in Phillips Arena for the opening session. Uh, very cool to have one of our customers on stage with, my, uh, with Wayne Morris. Hirsch and Family Entertainment. So you might not know Hirsch and Family Entertainment by name, but you'll, under, you, you'll know some of their properties. So Hirsch and Family Entertainment is the largest family-owned uh, amusement and entertainment group in the United States. They own properties like the Harlem Globetrotters, like Dollywood. Silver Dollar City, Newport Aquarium. All over the country, all over the United States, they have amusement and entertainment parks run by Hershen Family Entertainment. Why is this important to, to you as marketers, but also to us from Silver Pop, is there's one customer excellence award given every year for marketing productivity and marketing in general. Silver Pop's client, Hershen Family Entertainment, won this award led by Amanda Johnson, who's their corporate CRM and email marketing manager. Very cool, complex project, and, and really driving all the way down to that in-park experience. And then finally, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana, uh, the presentation we just talked about from the buyer revolution, Bill Nussi on the right, our CEO, and James Spears, the CRM marketing manager from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana, were invited to present a session at, at Convergence as well. So. Three really cool customer stories. What's really important about Convergence is customers get up and tell their story, and you can learn from folks that are going through or have gone through the same types of challenges you faced as an organization. And just to share uh, what was really exciting for us from a Silver Pop perspective, the customer recognition. If you look down the left-hand side, these are award winners. I think there were 16 Customer Excellence Award winners, and four of them were Silver Pop customers. And then to the right, you'll see Silver Pop customers that were finalists for uh, these Excellence Awards, but, but did not happen to win the award, but were in a list of three or four to win the award, including, um, as I go back to the winners, Signature Flight Support. They, uh, Microsoft recognizes one individual every year to to be crowned kind of a business visionary, taking um, Dynamics CRM and other related or ISV applications and driving business value. This is the second year in a row that Silverpop has been represented uh, with the individual business visionary. Last year it was CSX, who won ongoing evangelism this year. And this year it was Melissa Singer from Signature Flight Support, which is a company that manages private aircraft almost a concierge service to private aircraft as they move from airport to airport. Dow Chemical, and uh, we talked about Hershen Family Entertainment already as well, were included in those awards. What would you have learned about Silver Pop? You weren't there? 
most likely. So you can see that we had a pretty cool booth. It was fun to be able to have folks come by and play Xbox, uh, you know, different tournaments, dance games, and, and really make it as much about networking and, and a place for folks to meet as much as it was about understanding who Silver Pop is as a company and what we do. Um, who is Silver Pop? And you might be asking yourself that. We're a marketing automation or a digital marketing company that focuses on marketing automation, you know, from an email, mobile, and social perspective. Uh, we're the only company that offers two distinct platforms for the Microsoft space, and this is pretty important. Um, one is Core Motives, which is embedded in Microsoft CRM, and what that means is it is built on the CRM platform. Everything happens in CRM, so as a user, you only have to learn one particular tool. We also have our Engage platform, which is a standalone platform that is integrated, which means data moves back and forth between the two. And oftentimes, enterprise-sized clients, enterprise-sized marketing departments, really want their own application with functionality that goes beyond marketing auto, just the marketing automation piece. That is Engage. So it is not that we have two distinct products for market and there's data moving everywhere. In fact, we bring two distinct products to market because that's what our clients ask for. And then to uh, underlie both of these products, we have a robust professional services team that can augment your team, and we also have deliverability. So the most important thing about marketing automation is making sure your emails land where they need to land when they need to get there. And we have a dedicated staff that manages that, and uh, the, the technical details of how that works, are, are it's really pretty amazing. Um, one last thing, the, the third session that we, the third, the third piece of attendance at Convergence is the keynote. This year it was Ariana Huffington. Um, if you uh, happen to be a Silver Pop customer or are interested in learning more from your peers about marketing automation, our conference is coming up, Amplify, and Ariana Huffington and Peter Shankman are both speaking at our conference along with our CEO, Bill Messi. So one last slide, and, and we'll be able to open it up for questions, but it's important to note that if you're a CRM user, whether it's, or a prospect, that there are other incredible partners out there that can help you. So not just your CRM implementation partner, but we are incredibly honored to be the platinum sponsor at a party that happens at Convergence um, every year. And, and we wanted to also share the folks that help sponsor that with us, and that would be ADX Studios, ExpoLogic, InsideView, Scribe, and Trillium. I'm not going to go into each, what, each uh, aspect of what those individual ISDs or um, software vendors provide, but if you're in the CRM space, if you are using CRM, you know, if I think about an InsideView, for example, and this is the one story that I'll share, having better data creates creates more power for your sales team in the buyer revolution. That is something that an inside view can give you. Lead enrichment is a perfect example. So um, when we want to thank our partners in case any of them happen to be on the webinar as well. So with that, um, Jason, I'd like to turn it back over to you. I gave us about 20 minutes left, so if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, thanks, Dan. And uh, like Dan said, we're, we're open for questions now. You'll see the uh, the chat and the um, well uh, and the Q and A on the right side of the screen there, and we welcome your questions. Um, so please do submit them. Uh, Dan, I did have one question uh, that that I'm curious about. It's something I've asked a few people, and it's related to convergence and and maybe how it's uh, changed from from previous years in terms of you know how informed would you say the attendees uh, were at this most recent convergence event, perhaps compared to past past years. Sure, excellent question, Jason. I, there's a couple ways that I would I would look at the the preparedness of the crowd at convergence. And I've been attending convergence for several years, and it, it's probably best summed up in, in you know this is meant in in light humor. It's best summed up by a friend of mine who's a, a Microsoft salesperson saying. This is the first time at Convergence that the the ladies and, and men more wore suits than jeans and T-shirts. And so what that tells you is you're getting the business decision makers coming to Convergence, and they're coming with informed questions because they're not going to be there to, um, you know, just kind of walk around, figure out what's going on. 
So from an, an informed or an educated perspective, Convergence was probably, a, 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 it, well, it was more informed from a user perspective than ever before. We were seeing that buyer revolution take place this year where pointed questions were being asked. You could tell research was being done. And the sessions across the, you know, the ERP products and the uh, and Dynamics CRM and now uh, Dynamics Marketing were very informative to help really move the guesswork out of it and, and direct to educating folks to the next level. And the nice thing about Convergence is you can still attend as a prospect and go to those 100 level conference sessions. But Microsoft makes, takes great pain to put 300 and 400 level sessions on to continue to push the bar from a uh, user perspective and a partner perspective. And all of the sessions that I attended, it even felt like folks were asking those next level questions. Whereas in previous years at Convergence, it was more of a technical consumption, how do I build X? How do I do Y? The, the business benefit discussion is, is moving front and center. Uh, and I think that's evident by some of Microsoft's recent acquisitions and their focus on the marketing space. All right, great. And yeah, I, I would just, uh Add to that that I've asked that question to several people who have different focus areas, and they've all sort of uh, uh, echoed that sort of sentiment that that this year the attendees at the event came in with uh, with better education, with more sort of pointed questions, and less of the more basic uh, information gathering, um, for sure. Um, all right. Well, I would make a, maybe a last call for questions here. We haven't had anything so far. Um, uh, Dan, any other sort of parting words or, or, or parting thoughts uh, as it relates to convergence and uh, you know what's coming up? Uh, what's coming up? Maybe launching out of convergence this year. Sure. So, um, if you weren't able to attend, spend some time on Microsoft's site. You can often see a lot of the sessions that are recorded. It, it's well worth the investment to attend convergence every year. Uh, you know, next year, for example, a as a as someone, because you're on, you know, you're on this webinar because you're interested in Microsoft CRM or Microsoft Dynamics communities in general, the knowledge you can gain is important. But it's all, I would also say that a lot of the stories you hear at Convergence are found in other communities, and this is a, the Microsoft Dynamics World community is another MS Dynamics World community is a place where you can find all sorts of business benefit discussion, not just bits and bytes, not just labels and fields on forms and how do I from a technical perspective. So I would really encourage the audience to think about how do I influence my business and how do I change my business rather than how do I build something technically if I'm, you know, happen to be focused around a particular product. Okay. Well, uh, well, thanks for that, uh, Dan, and uh, we will wrap it up there. So thanks to everyone on the line. Thanks for attending. We are recording today's session, and we'll make it available uh, quite soon. So, uh, th so thanks again. And uh, thanks, thanks again, and have a good day. Thank you.